can you tell me, and I know this is the question you've probably been asked more than anything else, but can you explain to me why uh, you decided to buy into the Georgia Territory, but then you didn't really work the Georgia ter- Territory that much? You were more based in mid-Atlantic. Um, I bought it to the, uh, my share of the Georgia Championship for investment opportunity. Business was great, and, you know, I, from the school, you know, I, uh, fortunately I was, I was educated and, and I knew that my body wasn't, I wasn't a big giant guy and I wasn't destined to be world heavyweight champion. I was, was going to be a, a good, good position where I could make a decent living, but I also realized that, that brother, you know, the body will only last so many bumps. You know, you got that, like a dance card, you know, you only got so many slots for dancers. So you want to make sure when you get down that bottom, you, you save the, the last then for the, the proper one. So I I'd always knew that there'd come a time and day where I'd have to have something to fall back on. And, uh, my brother and I were, were, were very fortunate because we were so close. So we invested, we invested in real estate. We, had two or three businesses going here in Tampa and in Georgia. We invested in real estate, but the opportunity came up where there was some shares available in Georgia. And I, and I, like I said, I always had outside investments. I would, I was always taught to save my money. It's not what you make, it's how much you save. And so I tried to make it saving more than what was coming in. So I had cash. And so the guy needed money. He needed cash. So, I was approached Briscoe, you know, I wasn't the first one approached him you know, and my brother was already a shareholder in there. And they, you know, and we were with the time that we did, uh, that I did go in and work Georgia, you know, we busted it open and grew some money and made some money out of that out of place. So promoters were like, if you got a good guy, a good business guy, or somebody seems like a good, good head on the show, bring him into the business. So. I was, I started buying my little shares of Jordan and I ended up buying shares of Florida, but that's basically how it began as I knew I couldn't last forever. So I wanted to stake and, 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 and just to make this story a little bit longer back when I first started in the business, I, uh, Jack was already in the business, my brother, Jack. So I would, I would, I'd, I was lucky where I, I was at Oklahoma State University on scholarship, but during the summertime and spring breaks, I would call Leroy McGurk, who was a promoter, and I'd drive the ring truck. So I would, I would, I would not only drive the ring truck, but they got to trust me where I'd set up the, the chairs and I'd work the box office and I'd do the, I'd do the settlement at the box office. I did the whole thing. So I started, you know, okay. 25% or 30% goes over here to talent. The 70% goes back over here to the promoter. So as I'm counting out that money, my little simple mind said, you know, here's $1 here and here's $7 over here. Which side do I want to be on when I, when I get there? So I had that experience at an early age on which side to be on. So it wasn't very difficult when the opportunity and those opportunities didn't come up every day for some wrestler to purchase part of a territory yet go through a certain vetting process so so i jumped at the opportunity and, and then after people found out i had a little cash more opportunities started to come along so it was it was just i was lucky I, I actually the first first one i bought was uh buddy coats uh his stock in georgia and buddy had just gone through that, that horrific airplane crash he wasn't able to work and all that stuff. So he offered me a price and I didn't try to cut him down on his price because I knew he needed the money. And I went with his, 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 his original costs and what's that, that original cost cost me more than all the other stock combined, I think, because I didn't want to screw buddy because he was needing medical assistance and that was the only way to get it. So I, I bought Buddy stock from Georgia. That's how I ended up as being a stockholder there. Uh, what um, what month, what year was this when you bought oh, the stock? When ever the plane crash was, uh, you'll have to yeah. go home. Okay. Um, um, so other people, uh, so we've got Paul Jones and Jim Barnett and uh, you and Jack all sell your shares to Vince McMahon, Black Saturday. It's uh, a very complicated Green, story. Green people Saturday. Can... Green uh, Saturday. Green, oh, well, Green Saturday for you, of course. <laughs> well, actually, that brings me to the question, actually, is... Did you decide to sell because you were disgruntled working with Oli, or did you decide to sell because 
you were going to make a good profit on your investment? It wasn't a, uh, that great question. We, we decided to sell because my brother and I, like I said, we were fortunate where we attended college, but you know, you, you got any business at all, expansion is a key to, to growth and making money. But the, the fraternity of the NWA at that time did not allow you to expand too much. And now, now we got a brand new vehicle enters the uh, the race in professional wrestling, and that vehicle is called cable television. You cannot control where cable television goes. So all those agreements that the NWA uh, owners had where Florida wouldn't go into this territory or Georgia wouldn't go into the Mid-Atlantic or Mid-Atlantic wouldn't go into there, all those with your TVs, because people people didn't want your TV to you know, you know, like anywhere else, a, a group start, a new group start. Everybody wants to see what they're bringing to the table. Uh, 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 an old group, well, okay, uh, here comes it. What are they carrying? You know, so everybody wants to see them in the beginning. You know, until things settle down. So promoters across the country were scared to death of this cable TV. Well, Jack and I realized that hey. You know, we did, we made one ex, uh, expansion, Georgia did. We went into Ohio, Michigan, and West Virginia. That place was burnt to the ground by the old original sheet that, that promoted it. And I was a promoter who went in there and tried to square things off. And that was the roughest job I think I had was trying to get, I'd walk into a TV station. We'd like our, our, our TV promotion done there. Well, you you work with that Iron Sheik, he owes us fifty thousand dollars. You go over to Radio Station, same thing. Would you run a promotion? Well, you know the last rising promoter. So I we had to start paying everything up front, all for to promote the city. So well, uh, what 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 happened is finally uh, finally it got to the deal where we we were we were knocking out. We went into the Sheik because it was a burnout territory. Nobody was promoting it, so our TV. At TBS, at the time, they give you what these these rating sheets, and the damn book was like this. You go through, you go through, you know, five million subscribers in X X town, whatever it was. Man, we should run a well. We go to Barnett. Well, we can't run there because Fritz is running there, or Vern's running there, or one of the other NWA. So the expansion, even though we had this wonderful vehicle that nobody knew anything about, we couldn't use it. Well, Vance setting up in there in that damn New York, he knew what was going on. And, and our partners, we, we tried to convince our partners expansion is the only way we're going we're gonna to beat this guy. And we can't do it because of our relationship with the NWA. We, we did our due diligence with everybody. And the thing that, that kind of gets lost in the shuffle is Vince wasn't the first guy we went to about selling our, our territory. Really? Jim Crockett was the first guy we went to. Then Jim Crockett's partner, the Mernix that ran Virginia for, for him, Eddie Graham. We went to several different, Bill Watts. We went to several different people, and all of them would call Ole. And Ole would say, they're trying to screw you. They're asking too much money for it. They'll never get that kind of money. They're just disgruntled. They're, they're pissed off at me, and, uh, and uh, they're just trying to get even with me. You know, it, it's not worth what they're asking for. So one day, just as luck would have, Piper had left on to work for Vince. He had work in Madison Square Garden. The table, he went to grab a table, and the table had uh, on the inside of it where you grab it, that edge had been shaved down, so it was kind of rough. So when he grabbed it, all of his all of his tendons on his fingers got 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 severed. So we went, we we'd heard what Piper might lose his fingers. Well, Piper was a great friend of my brother and I. So we want to know how Roddy was. We're doing TV in Jim Crockett's office. And uh, Jack walks in. Hey, uh, Jimmy, did you hear about Piper? Yeah. How's he doing? Well, I don't know. And Jim, uh, Jack said, why don't you call Vince and find out, you know, if Piper's all right. Well, I'm not calling that SOB, you know. And Crockett said, well, if you want to call him, Jack, you call him. So Jack picks up the phone, calls Vince, and Boom, Ben picks up the phone right away. Jack tells him he's in Jimmy Crockett's office doing bit, uh, promos, uh, uh, interview promos for the for next week. And he said, well, I know you can't talk to him, but you, can you say yes or no? And you guys be interested in sitting down and talking to, to me. And Jack said, yes. 
He said, well, call me as soon as you guys get in a place where you can do it. Well, of course, we're not thinking that he's wanting uh, wanting to buy our stock out. We're thinking he's wanting us to, because we're hot. We just turned heel against Steamboat and Youngblood and was selling out all over the place. We're figuring that he wanted it as a talent, and neither one of us wanted to go and work that schedule. So we called him. We finished the interviews. We went to Jack's apartment. Jack picked up a phone, called Vince. Vince said, hey, I uh, understand you guys are shopping shopping your, your, your shares of Georgia Championship Price. And Jack said, yeah. He said, would you like to talk to me about it? And uh, Jack says, yeah. And he said, well, when can you guys come to New York? So we looked on our books and noticed we had a Thursday off coming up the next week. Well, we got the next Thursday off. We're in Virginia already, so we can, you know, it's a short short flight to, to New York City, then back to back to Virginia. So we can do it next Thursday. So Vince set up the whole thing and we were we didn't tell a damn soul and we were able to go up New York to LaGuardia Airport, met in one of the Eastern Airlines uh, conference rooms and and kind of hammered out an agreement to, to move forward and then to keep it between ourselves. And how we kept it a secret for five months, I'll never know. But uh it was probably the best kept secret ever in the business up to that point. <laughs>